Hey there, today I'm going to talk about running in Latvia. I'm here outside the National Library of Latvia and Latvia is beautiful to run in. But instead today, I'm going to go inside and attend a lecture on James Joyce. Who in their right mind would want to go in, spend an afternoon in beautiful Riga, listening to some old dude banging on about James Joyce? Well, I guess I would and I gotta go. I'm the one giving the lecture. I'm making this video because I was invited by the Embassy of Ireland Latvia to come and deliver some lectures about James Joyce and something about my running projects in relation to James Joyce. The lectures, there was two lectures and I have made a video, it's about an hour, it's just over an hour long and I'll link that at the end should you wish to find out what on earth I was speaking about when I was in Latvia. But when I was there I decided to do some running and that's what this video is about. Travel to Latvia was really straightforward. I flew KLM to Amsterdam from Dublin and then flew on Air Baltic, Latvia's national airline. The flight was really enjoyable. They have 47 Airbus A220 300s. They're all identical, I think. And then they have two seats and three seats. Initially, I was stuck in the middle, which is not my favorite position on an airplane, but managed to get an aisle seat on the side and very pleasant way of traveling. I'd never been to Riga before, but I'd heard it was beautiful. And it is. There's a beautiful old town, lots of old streets. When I went, it was winter. I should have titled this uh, what it's like to go running in Latvia in winter because it was snowing every day, which I, I really liked. The old town is beautiful. Lots of sort of narrow streets and vistas and old architecture. It's, it's really beautiful. There's a canal, I think it probably goes around the, the old town. It was largely frozen over, but it was there. There's lots of beautiful Art Nouveau buildings. The Irish Embassy is located in one of those. And there are a lot of beautiful new buildings. I was speaking in the National Library. You would have seen it at the start, designed by Gunnar Burkertz. And it has a dramatic exterior and really a dramatic interior. And if you like books, well, this is the place to come. For a variety of reasons, when I was in Riga, I wanted to run a half marathon. So I did. I planned a route on my Garmin north out of the city towards a large park, Metsa Parks. It was really beautiful running there, running through parts of the older city along the tram tracks, then out to the park itself. I could tell it was wintertime. There's almost nobody around. And as I entered the park, I could see all of these uh, stalls, empty stalls. So I imagine in summertime, it's really humming. There's a beautiful amphitheater in the center of the park that I, I wanted to see a, a nice piece of modern architecture. There's nobody there, but I imagine it's rammed because in the summertime because there are various Latvian festivals that are held there. And it is it is really beautiful park. There's lots of places where people go on to climbing sections. They look like sort of um, adventure training areas. And uh, one great thing they have over the Phoenix Park, they have public toilets available all year round. There's maps of them, so yeah. But it was a beautiful place to run in. I ran around there and then back down into the city and thoroughly enjoyed myself. After my marathon in Riga and my lecture, <laughs> I don't know whether the marathon was running or the lecture. But anyway, my uh, after my marathon run in, in, in Riga and the lecture, we headed down by bus to a seaside town called Liapaya, about four hours by bus from Riga. Very pleasant trip down. And Liapaya is really beautiful. It's a coastal town on, on the ba Baltic. Riga is in a kind of bay, as far as I can see. But when you went down to Liapaya, there was a lot of lovely old villas made of timber. There were beautiful parks. There was a, a tram that went a, a loop of the city. It really was very beautiful. I got to go running on the beach, which was probably the highlight of, of the trip. It's a really beautiful long beach. You could tell, I mean, it's winter time. There was nobody there, but well, there were a, a couple of people there, not, not many, but you could see that there were restaurants and there were places that in the summertime, the beach is probably really busy. I ran on it first thing in the morning and I walked on it late in the evening when it was getting dark and it was snowing. I mean, it was, it was beautiful. But um, yeah, there were people running around on the beach at night when I was there, but it was really, really beautiful. The snow was pretty novel for me to go running in. There were people running all the time when I was running in Latvia, largely dressed pretty similar to myself, but I did see people in some shorts. Some mornings it said on the watch it was minus four or minus six, but there was no wind on any of the days I went there. And I found the running conditions to be really pleasant. 
for those of us who are midfoot strikers or mid to rear foot strikers, there was some joy to be had in that you, when you can land, you have to adjust your steps as far as I could see. My technique was to adjust so you sort of land as flat as you can to give you as much contact patch with the ground. There, the, I went running at about 11 o'clock in the morning when I was in Riga when I started my half marathon, which turned out to be really good because I think around the, the day I was there, it might have been around zero at mid, midday, but any sort of thawing that was there would have happened by, by 11 o'clock when the sun was up and then I was out not too late so before the sun went down and they started to freeze again. A lot of people cleaned the streets. There's a lot of grippy pavements and there's a lot of um, salt here and there. So conditions underfoot were pretty good. I like to run on the soft snow. That was always very pleasant. But a couple of times I was I was running up past um, when I entered the Metsa Parks and I was trying to get to some parts were a bit more icy than others. So I thought I'd run on some fresh snow and then I could feel a bit of ice underneath. I thought maybe I'm running on a stream. So I got off that pretty quickly and then I, I headed out in part. Occasionally I, I ran on the road against the direction of traffic where it was really much, much drier. But for the most part, conditions were really good underfoot. Latvians, it seems, don't jaywalk when you're out running. You probably do a lot of jaywalking, jay running, but everybody pr pretty much stopped at pedestrian crossings and, dare I say it, obeyed the law. But not only did people stop at pedestrian crossings, but cars would stop in pedestrian crossings. And not like it's not like some of the Latin countries where they're just decoration for the road. People really did stop in what were pretty icy conditions. I was nervous about stepping out, but everyone else was just walking around freely. So yeah, that was that made running. In, in Riga and in Liepaja, really blessed. Before I went, I, I packed an awful lot of running stuff. My, my, my uh, suitcase was full of running gear and tech. I mean, almost no, well, there wasn't, certainly wasn't any regular clothes, but a minimal amount of clothes and all of it running clothes. I think I brought four running jackets just in, just in case. But the most important thing I brought were these, the uh, normal Tomir waterproof shoes. They have super grip and traction. These were fantastic. I've reviewed everything I wore, I've reviewed separately and I'll put links in the description. But these were really fantastic. I don't run in them as often. I wear them a lot in Dublin, but I don't run in them very often. But these were absolutely perfect for my half marathon. They were super grippy. And I, the second day I did 24,000 steps out walking around. And which is when Leopai, I walked 24,000 steps. And at no point in time did my feet feel cold or wet in any sense. So yeah, these were these were great. I actually found them more grippy and typically I found I slipped much less when I was running than walking. Whatever way I got my technique going, running I slipped very little. I was, <laughs> I, I, I took some precautions as I, I'll get to, but I wore regular running socks. I wore my sore running socks. I didn't bring any special ones. I had my Under Armour liners with my phone down the side. I wore either my Janji or my Path running trousers. Both were perfect. All the stuff was zipped in. That was really good. I wore my on running men's trail breaker, which is quite thin, um, wind resistant at the front. It's got a, a porous at the back to let out ventilation over a regular Nike running t-shirt. And it was perfect. I was warm the entire time. I took my Seiskai Merino base 165 scarf headband. I thought I might need to put it over my nose at some stages. I didn't. And then I wore my regular Rudy Project running glasses and my, my usual um, combo of, of my peaked cap, my on running peaked cap to keep the sun out of my eyes or the snow off my glasses. And also then the woolly merino hat, the on running over the top. Might look a little ridiculous, but they worked, they worked absolutely perfectly. I also was nervous. I thought to myself, the last thing I want to do is go out. I didn't know, I'd never been where I was going. So I didn't know where the park was full of people. It was moderately full or whatever, but I just thought just in case I brought a Salomon vest that again I've reviewed and I brought an emergency blanket with a whistle none of which I needed an emergency blanket a whistle and I also brought some gel my pre precision fuel I think it's 90 grams of gel just in case I, I twinged a leg or, or or something I, I didn't really I was nervous of having to ring the embassy and they say look you know any chance you could send an ambulance up to I've fallen over that would have just you know that wouldn't have been. so I was really cautious in the running and in what I took and all of it worked really well. The one thing I really did notice is as soon as I got back to the hotel, having done the half marathon, 
when I went outside to just check a few things, you get cold really fast. So even though I didn't need the emergency blanket, I didn't need the gel and I didn't need the whistle, I was really glad I brought them. In Riga, I stayed in the Radisson SAS. It was super comfortable. There was a great breakfast and I, I ate inside once because when I came back after my half marathon, I didn't really want to go out again, but I uh, ate something. I don't know if it was a poke bowl or a poke bowl, but it was, it was absolutely delicious and not expensive. And one of the great things, this is probably true. In, in Latvia, one of the things you notice is that when you go into places, they're used to having people with coats and, and dripping snow. So there's lots of spaces where you can have coats inside in restaurants. But in the, uh, in the hotel, there was underfloor heating in the bathroom, which was fantastic for drying the gloves. I forgot to mention I was wearing my Sis Guy gloves with the, with the little mitten piece and um, was able to dry the gloves, the hat, the beanie, everything just really super. So yeah, underfloor heating in a hotel bathroom where there's snow is, yeah, very useful. Latvia is inexpensive. Well, I say it's inexpensive compared to Dublin, which is very expensive. I mean, I went to Zurich and I found Zurich cheap. So it, they, Latvian currency, they use the Euro just like we do here. Everything is like a, a, mo it's a modern European country and a lot of people speak English. Certainly, I would say all of the younger people speak English to varying degrees and very easy to work your way around or buy things in shops or any of that sort of stuff. It's a really easy country to visit. I was talking to some people about when is a great time to visit. And for me, I thought, well, we're now February. I thought this is perfect. A lot, lots of snow. I thought it's great. Or when it's hot in the summer. That's Then I thought they'd be when I would love to visit. But I was talking to some locals and we were all agreeing that if you were a local, you probably love the spring and the fall or the autumn when it's probably not as cold or not as hot. But for me, conditions are perfect, but particularly in the winter. That was a, a big uh, new experience for me and one that I enjoyed immensely. Latvia is very flat and running is uh, very pleasant from that point of view. I think Riga is, there's a, it's a big river, so it must be in a valley and or the center of Riga is. And as I went out, I think I might've gone slightly uphill to the park and, 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 and back, but nothing dramatic. There is a marathon. It's on the 17th and 18th, the weekend of the 17th and 18th of May, 2024 and presumably annually. I can't go this year, but it looks fantastic. But one of the things that I really did like, first of all, you'd be running around a beautiful city. It will be warm on the 17th to 18th of May. I'm not sure what time of the day the marathon is, but it will be very pleasant conditions. Let's call it that flat course in a beautiful city. One of the things that I really loved was they have beautiful medals done each year by individual artists. And I think there's t-shirts to go with them. They are really beautiful. And just that idea, that's something really special. So if I wasn't already overcommitted for marathons this year and next year, the Riga Marathon would certainly be on my list. It was a real honor for me to be invited to talk about James Joyce and my related running projects. And I'd particularly like to thank the Ambassador of Ireland to Latvia, Her Excellency, Emer Friel for inviting me and for all the staff, everybody. It was just, it was just a wonderful trip from start to finish. And as I said, there'll be a link to that lecture at the end. Much as I like to encourage people to come to Dublin to run around, contact me if you're coming. I think it would be really good to run in Latvia. I really did like running there and it was really interesting to see lots of people out running. Various members of my friends and family like to say that I can talk for Ireland. I, I, I don't think it's quite a compliment. It might be nice to think it is, but I don't think that's what they're getting at. But yeah, in this particular instance, for one particular moment, yeah, probably did talk for Ireland. I hope you enjoyed the video and found it useful. If you did, it would be great if you'd hit the like button. As always, there'll be lots of stuff in the description below and I'll happily answer any questions you put into the comments. There'll be a big blue subscribe button popping up there. That's the right videos there. Thanks for watching. Until the next video, just keep running along.